Welcome back everyone. In the previous lecture, we saw how simple it was to create and run a basic Next.js application. So, it is as well very important to understand the boilerplate. Right within the explorer, let me show you over here. Here on the left edge of the screen is the explorer. So if yours is closed, you can do command B or control B to open it up. And right now I have closed it down. You can do command B or control B to open it up. So within the explorer, you will see the files and folders that makes up the next JS application. One of the most important folder here is the app folder. Click to open. Within the app folder, you will find the layout.tss, the global CSS, page.tss, and the fifth icon. One of the most important files that we have to take note of is the layout.tss. Okay, let me close down the terminal. Beautiful. Now let's open up the layout.tss. The layout.tss file is the entry point of every Next.js application. And all of the components are wrapped up within it as the children. Here is it. So as a result, any code you write here will be displayed on every route page you created. So if you want to implement a component that stays consistent in all the pages, it is good you render it here. For example, the header and the footer. Right here, you can set the language. And also you can customize the metadata for all the pages. And now let's go over to the page.tss. The page.tss represents the home page route of the Next.js application. And here is it, okay? So all of the markup you see here describes the UI. It's quite simple. So here we have, let me show you, we have a div and it is being stylized with a tailwind, yeah? And here we have a p tag. Here is the p tag. And we have the rest of the tags. Yeah, so all of this over here, right, within the page.tss describes the home page. So let's assume I want to delete everything over here for teaching purpose. Yeah, so I just have to delete from this div over to this div. I wipe it off and then I save. When you go back to the browser, reload, and you will have a blank page. So let me open up the global CSS. Of course, you should know what global CSS is. I don't need to explain that to you any longer. Let's also copy everything right here. Okay, let's wipe it off. Save and boom. This is the blank page now that we have. Good. Now we are done with the app folder. We have to close it down and let's proceed to the public. So right within the public, you have the next.svg, the vessel.svg, and the rest of the stuff over here. So uh, basically, the public folder holds all the public resources for our application. And this include the fourth icon, the SVGs, and a lot more. The difference between the Next.js public folder and the React.js public folder is that over here, we do not have the index.html. So you can recall that in React.js, the public folder contains the index.html, which is the single HTML page that is being rendered on the screen. Okay, but here we do not have any of such thing, right, within the public folder. Now let's proceed with the package.json file. Close down the public. Right here we have the package.json. The package.json file contains the dependencies and scripts that makes up the project. So within the dependencies, let me show you. We have React, React DOM, Tailwind, and TypeScript installed. And on lines 18, we have Next.js 13.4.4 installed. So depending on when you're watching this lecture, the version may be different, 
But I can assure you, the paradigm remains the same. So you can continue learning this course without any hesitation. And right here, we have the ESLint and the ESLint config. So basically, the ESLint will help you highlight the possible error and warning you may have on your code. So we can say that ESLint help you to lint your code for error. So above here, we also have the scripts. Yeah? And over here, we have the dev script. This helps to run the next application in development mode with hot code reloading, error reporting, and a lot more. Second is the build script. It helps to compile Next.js application and get it ready for production deployment. The next on the list is the start, and this helps to start the compiled application in production mode. And lastly, we have the lint. The lint script lints all the files in your application. Now we are done with the package.json file. Let's close it down. Open up the explorer. Here we have the git ignore. So the git ignore helps for version control with git. And as well, what else do we have here? We have the readme.md file. The readme file contains a few documentation related to running, building, and deployment. Okay, so you can go through the readme file if you wish. Uh, it is mostly used for documentation purposes. And I think these are the important files for us to discuss over here. Okay, this is all for now. In the next lecture, we will get our hands dirty by implementing the next JS route. See you in the next lecture.